There's this thing that happens a lot. Um, a stylist will leave a salon and go and open up an independent suite, and she wants to take her clients with her. And this is really hard on commission salon owners, but my question for you is, whose client is it anyway? In this video, we're going to dig into whose client is that Anyway, my name is Heather Coolis. I am a consultant, a coach, a mentor, and all-round cheerleader for you. And I want you to hit the subscribe button, the notification, and uh, I want you to throw me a like. I'll see you on the inside, and let's talk about whose client that is anyway. Okay, so here what ha here's what happens as an owner. You know what it's like. If you can keep a stylist for three to five years, you're kind of, you know, uh, that's kind of about the lifespan of having a stylist because as stylists are entrepreneurs and if you're not offering them growth, they're going to grow their way right out of your salon. So a lot of them leave for that very reason. They're just going nowhere. They're not making more money. Nothing's happening and they're just oh, bored. Um, so, you know, they'll stay there they work for that long. They build up a client base and then when they leave, they want to take their clients. Now, my question is, is I think they're salon clients. Um, if you brought them in, do you know, like I was reading a post the other day in, in, um, I think it was the sovereign stylist and, and, um, the question was, well, if I'm in a commission salon, I'm in a commission salon and um, my boss says I need to do some marketing. Isn't it the salon's job to bring clients in? I'm like, really? In 2022, you don't realize that there's a little entrepreneur seed inside of you or there better be or you're just going to be like, you know, I don't know. You'll be like a a dental hygienist in five years because you'll be like getting nowhere. You got to have a little marketing in you. But the question arises that, well, you know, on one hand, the salon does do that. And that's part of why she has as much claim to any clients that you grow if you've grown your base in, in her salon. So she markets. She's the one who's putting out all the money. Uh, she's the one cleaning the toilets at midnight. She's the one renovating the place. She's incurring all of the costs, all of the costs to bring in clients of a nature that is worthy of you. Now, it is then your job to bring the client back, you know, and if you're not very good or you're you have no personality, maybe you're really good and you're just like, you know, you don't have it, you know, that spark and you don't build, she has to then reassess your value to the salon at that point. But she markets like crazy. He markets like crazy. Um, and to bring these, these people in. Now, when the client leaves and you've built her and you've been working, you know, you've been doing her hair for five years. Okay, let's be fair. You kept the client for that long. And so you know, I suppose she is your client. You did bring her back after all. But how awkward is it for her if when you leave, you're just like phoning all your clients and going, okay, so listen, I've opened up my own salon suite and this is where I'm going to be. So we're going to schedule your next appointment there. What if I just really love the salon I go to? You know, like maybe, I mean, I do love you, but maybe um, I really like the the coffee and the atmosphere and the vibe and the cookies and the events they run and the sales they have and the products I can buy them. Maybe I like all of that. Now you've just put me in a super awkward position where I go, oh, oh okay, okay, right? And then if she goes to you now, she feels bad about going back to the salon. It's like, oh no, what should I, right? It's all just, it's just all so awkward. So I think that it's fair game when we're like, whose client is it anyway? Hairstylist, phone your salon, phone your clients, and uh, invite them into your new digs. Salon owners, email these clients and invite them to continue to do business with you. I have a great letter, by the way, 
for sending out to clients when a stylist moves on. And it's so great. And the stylist, listen, you're going to like it too. It just says, lovely stylist uh, Anna Marie has uh, decided to move on. She's going to do this amazing thing and she's working here. You know, please don't be like, I don't know where she is. Like, that's just tacky. Just say where she is. But we have always valued you as a client and we would like to invite you to come back because we've got Justine is just starting and started here and she's great with curly hair you know it's a gr i've got a couple great letters that just will give you a, a guideline as to something that you might put in there but to be honest with you salon owners if you're not keeping track of your clients if you have done nothing to foster a relationship with your clients might need to lean a little to the stylist here okay so Stylist, if you're building relationships with your clients, which you should be doing, um, your clients will probably want to follow you. Owners, if you're not building a relationship with your community, if you're not sending out emails, if you're not introducing them to your dog, if you're not emailing them and telling, telling them that Marie just got married and we're all really happy with her or letting them in on promotions or inviting them to events or whatever it is that you do, then, you know, you're going to have to just keep on the hamster wheel. And building and building and they get going really good and then they leave. And then you start them up again and you train them and you build them and it goes like this a year and then they leave. You know, if you want to stay on that hamster wheel, hiring hamster wheel of hell, then don't bother getting to know any of your clients. But if you would like to build a business, a business, then you need to do some businessy kind of things. And um, or you're just always going to be standing behind the chair, cutting hair until 10 o'clock, hoping that you're going to be able to pay the power bill on Monday. So that is my thoughts about whose client is it anyway. So if you found any value in this, I want you to hit the subscription button, hit the notification button, share it with all of your friends, throw me a like, and I will see you. Well, hey, hopefully I'm going to see you at the three ways to raise your prices on uh, December 27th. And uh, if not, I am going to be running a on fire how to hire today's stylist in January. So stay tuned and um, hey, stay awesome.